Hello everyone and welcome to La Vida Football. My name is Luis Laureano. I'm a UEFA B license coach. Today's video, we're going to be looking into Mexico's performances in the last friendly matches against South American teams. They've been playing against South American teams specifically to prepare for the Argentina match. And while they haven't done such a great job with respect to score lines, they have played well at moments. They have played bad at moments. And we will take a look at the results to see how they match up against Argentina. The strongest team in South America that they've played, in my opinion, has been Uruguay. Not only because Uruguay happened to win 3-0, but because I think Uruguay is one of the strongest teams that is a bit underrated for the World Cup. I, however, think they will do quite well in this tournament. Let's take a look at how Mexico lined up. They lined up in a 3-4-3, Talavera in goal. In the back line, it was Araujo, Montes, and Angulo. For the World Cup, I can't see that lineup being the starting lineup for any game, really. I don't imagine that Mexico will play with a back line of three. It could be that they do that against Saudi Arabia, but I can't imagine that they do that against Argentina nor against Poland. That being said, the midfield was quite strong, I would say. You had Sanchez on the right side, Gutierrez and Alvarez in the middle, Arteaga on the left side, who is typically a defender who tends to go really high up the field. So him playing as a left middle for this match wasn't too surprising. Up top, they had Corona, Jimenez, and Vega. Now those three I definitely see playing in the World Cup, Vega being most likely the second option behind behind Irving Lozano. With Corona being out, that could be a potential substitute. Only thing is, Vega tends to play on the left side, which seems to be his strongest side, along with Irving Lozano, who also plays on that side. Although Lozano is known to play on the right side with Napoli, so it could be interesting to see how Tata plays that in the World Cup. But anyways, this game 3-0. Uruguay playing with Cavani, Vecino, Belverde, essentially creating a little triangle up top on the left side, De La Cruz, on the right side, Belistri, playing in a 4-1-4-1 formation. Torreira in the defensive midfield position and a strong defensive line. You had Olivera, Coetes, Jimenez, and Araujo. In goal, you had Rochette. But overall, like I said, Uruguay just is a strong team. They managed three goals and they scored in the 35th minute, the 46th minute, and the 54th minute. So that is something to consider because that's going to be a bit of a pattern for Mexico getting scored on at specific times. So that game was June 3rd. June 6th, they had a game against Ecuador, which ended up in a draw with Guillermo Ochoa in goal. Now, now the back line of four, a little bit more normal for Mexico, at least with Tata Martino and what seems to be the option going into the World Cup. Here we have Araujo and Moreno in the center back positions. And I think that could be a potential lineup for the World Cup with Montes being the other option play alongside Hector Moreno. I don't see anybody taking over Hector Moreno's position right now. He seems to be performing quite well, at least for Mexico. On the outsides, Sanchez and Gallardo. Gallardo, another player that seems to be playing regular minutes under Tata Martino, although Arteaga seems to be a player that could be competing for that position as well. Now, the midfield was Hector Herrera, Guardado, and Beltran. Up top, Corona, Jimenez, and Vega once again. So, this was a pretty strong lineup for Mexico, something that could be possible for the World Cup. Now, Beltran is a player that would be coming in and out for sure, but with Edson Alvarez, I can see that Beltran would have less minutes, at least as a 90-minute player, because Guardado is no longer in form to play the 90 minutes, although he has a lot of experience and still a top player for Mexico. He is getting less and less minutes at Real Betis. Of course, he's getting older, and but at the end of the day, he's still a leader within that team. So we'll see how that goes in the World Cup. So no goals scored, but overall, I think the performance was quite good. Very back and forth match and some opportunities. But again, when you don't score, then you don't win. The next friendly match was the 1st of September, 1-0 loss against Paraguay in the 50th minute. So that is just five minutes after the start of the second half. Now, if we consider back to the game against Uruguay, it was the 40 sixth minute where they got scored on so literally one minute after the start and then in the 54th minute so nine minutes after the halftime started so definitely a terrible pattern to have going into the world cup going into the next match september 25th against peru now this was the first win that mexico has had against a south american team in some time watching mexico play against peru and perform the way they did and get the result at the end was definitely nice nothing against peru because if you just look at the highlights it would have have seen that Peru was the team that had the upper hand and at times they did it was just that Mexico managed to not receive a goal during this time now here the lineup was again Ochoa backline of four Hector Moreno Montes right next to him Alvarez on the right side Gallardo on the left side in the middle we had Alvarez Chavez and Rodriguez that is a good group there and then up top Martin Alvarado and Lozano now Martin is playing now as a center forward at least these last friendly matches due to Raul Jimenez being injured he has played quite well I 
they can't imagine that he will be written off for the World Cup should Jimenez be recovered. I believe that the performances that he's had with Mexico the last few matches has definitely put him a potential starting option for Tata. Just his work ethic, his preciseness with the passes. The only thing missing now is that he needs to score and that's probably the biggest detail being the center forward there. Okay, so Jesus Corona injured, could not have played in this match. Raul Jimenez also injured. Hector Herrera also injured. So that's three top players for Mexico that were not being used during these last friendly matches due to injuries. So we'll see who recovers and how it happens. Okay, so Mexico scored in the 85th minute through Irwin Lozano. Again, a good performance. Goal at the end of the match. Going into the next game against Colombia. Now, the first half against Colombia was, you could say, it was perfect. You know, Mexico scored two goals. One in the 6th minute. The next one in the 29th minute through beautiful play, actually. And went into the half with a 2-0 lead. The starting lineup for this game was Ochoa and goal. Araujo and Moreno as center backs. On the left side, Artiaga. On the right side, Alvarez. Once again, in the middle, we had Gutierrez, Guardado, and Rodriguez. A nice line of midfielders that have some experience with the Mexican national team. Guti, probably less than the other two, but still getting more and more minutes. Now, up top, we had Antuna, Martin, once again, and Vega. Great performance, I would say, from the three forwards. Martin, once again, playing an integral role in the buildup of the goals and being a great option. So, second half is when everything broke down down for Mexico against Colombia starting the second half. In the 49th minute, Colombia gets their first goal in a corner kick, so set piece. Second goal in the 52nd minute, so three minutes after the 2-1, they get the tie, 2-2, and that was through a throw-in, and then essentially Arteaga just, you know, failing to complete the tackle. Ball goes through, and Sinistera simply just puts that ball away on the far corner. Now, 2-2, the game at this point, it's a little bit more balanced. In the 68th minute, a beautiful strike from Vilmar Barrios into the far post. Ochoa had no chance. The shot was simply just beautiful. Mexico did have opportunities to score. Matter of fact, they had the possibility before the half to make it 3-0 through Alexis Vega, but essentially did not get a foot on the ball. However, Colombia managed that third goal, ended the match 3-2, and Mexico goes into this game with some good and bad. Good is that they had a great first half, but bad because didn't manage to stop Colombia during the Colombia attacking phase. The only difference in this match was that Colombia managed to only receive two goals during Mexico's attacking phase whereas Mexico received three had a 20 minute breakdown and basically paid the price now going back and looking into these score lines what can we take away Mexico is playing well under Tata Martino they are playing some good football they are attacking they are getting goal scoring opportunities against Uruguay maybe not so much at least no clear opportunities to say that Mexico had hope in this game uh, against Ecuador the 0-0 didn't score not great but not receiving goals was a positive losing to Paraguay with a lot of the Mexico based players nothing against Paraguay but Mexico could have done better in that match and receiving a goal in the 50th minute was probably the most crucial thing getting the 1-0 against Peru was a big plus meaning that they have it in them to win a match and to not receive goals against Peru that's a quite strong and at the end that farewell match against Colombia that 3-2 loss was hurtful but again a lot of good moments terrible 20 minutes but at the end of the day that's football okay so now what does that say about Mexico well it gives us an idea of who Tata Martino is going to go for for. That is it. Analyzing the last few friendly matches against South American teams, preparing against Argentina. Thank you for watching. If you like my video, kick that like button. Remember to subscribe. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, comment that in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Ciao.